Um, as you all know, I'm a particular fan of the uh, Autodesk uh, BIM 360 ecosystem and its ever-changing naming conventions. So it's always fun to play the uh, whack-a-mole game of trying to figure out what each module is called. Um, and um, uh, having done a little bit of a deep dive on on this, I know that a lot of what uh, what we've been talking about BIM 360 and cloud services uh, for Revit and beyond uh, are really sort of coming to a certain level of maturity, almost I would say coming of age and becoming a really, really good product. And Autodesk has kind of uh, put them together in what they now call the construction cloud. So this is really exciting. I was just uh, um, I was just telling Scott a couple of minutes before we started the call that I'm very much the audience for today. I'm weighing in a, a migration over here and going into more modules of the construction cloud. So this should be really interesting, at least to me. Hopefully it is to you as well. Uh, just a quick shout out to all of our sponsors for 2021. Uh, big thank you to everybody. Uh, you know, as even though we're still online rather than in person, uh, these meetings do take. Uh, you know, the most important part of it is the content that uh, that comes through, and that's very much thanks to our sponsors and our presenters. So we really appreciate it, and and you know, we love having you as part of the CREC family. A lot of you on this slide have been members and partners with us for such a long time. This is a great relationship. And lastly, a big thank you, of course, as usual, to the rest of the board. You know, we uh, uh, being online maybe makes this a little bit less impactful or less less of a less of a burden on our time, but uh, it's no less important to uh, to continue to steer this group in the in the right direction and to bring the the right content to our members. So thank you very much for all of your participation. Um, We'll record the session as usual, put it up on the uh, YouTube channel. So here's the uh, URL to that. You can always just uh, do a search for CRUG on the uh, search bar of YouTube and you'll be able to uh, find past meetings. Not all of them make it up there. Sometimes we have technical issues or uh, a meeting that doesn't record or one where the slides don't come through or something that is missing. But by and large, we we try to have as many of the uh, meetings as we possibly can on the CRUG channel. So check it out. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and shut up, mute myself, turn over the screen, and uh, hand it over to Laurie with uh, Imagine It. And uh, her and Scott will take us to the construction cloud. So thank you very much again, Imagine It, and uh, take it away, Laurie. Great, thank you so much, David. And thank you everyone for taking the time to join us today. My name is Lori and I'm the marketing specialist here at Imagine It Technologies. And I'll be your host for today's session uh, with Mr. Burke. So before we get started, as David mentioned, today's session is being recorded and David will have access to that recording shortly after today's event. The session will run about 50 minutes and we'll take Q&A at the end of the presentation. So please feel free to type your questions throughout the presentation into the Q&A panel and I'll read them um, to Scott when we're done. We do have a chat um, uh, tag as well. Um, I'm going to try to find anything we have on our website in regards to Autodesk Cloud. Maybe we've got PDFs, I'm not sure, but if I can find them, that's where I'll post them and I'll let you know that they're there. So with that, Welcome everyone to the Autodesk Construction Cloud webinar with our Imagine It AEC Cloud Services Program Manager, Scott Burke. Scott, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Laurie. So confirm you can see my screen there? Yes. Okay, great, so we can get started. So again, today's topic, of course, is the Autodesk Construction Cloud. So brief introductions here. Again, my name is Scott Burke. I'm the AC Cloud Solutions Program Manager here at Imagine It. So I work with our technical teams in relation to all the Autodesk Cloud solutions, primarily in the BIM 360 and the Unify platforms. So again, that's what we're talking about today, kind of a little bit about the construction cloud, the Unified versus the BIM 360 platform, and then the main modules um, of the kind of key premier tools within those environments. So again, you know, what is the Autodesk Construction Cloud? So first of all, this is not a new term. This term has actually been around, I think, well over a year, if not a little bit more than that. And the Autodesk Construction Cloud is really just all of the Autodesk Cloud solutions that deal with design and construction and even um, facilities management now. So that's just an overarching term. It's not new. I hate when people say, hey, the new ACC. Well, it's not new. It's been around a while. It's the tools within it that are new. So we have that overarching Autodesk Construction Cloud in that. And within that, Autodesk had originally purchased, and they had 
had BIM 360, which was homegrown. That's something they built in um, themselves. Then they eventually acquired Assemble Systems and eBuilder, I think it's called there, um, Building Connected, I meant to say, and, um, and Plan Grid over the years. And they're all great solutions, and there were integrations between them, so there was some levels of communication between these tools that they could kind of communicate. But those minor integrations weren't enough. So they worked hard to basically unify all the projects into more of a single platform, and that's the ultimate goal. So they created a kind of new platform still within the old Autodesk Forge, if you will, that's been around for a few years. So they've called this new tool, this new platform, and I, and I stress the word platform, as the Unify platform. So we have these two platforms now. We have the kind of existing or the original BIM 360 platform, and now we have the Unify platform, both of which are within the Autodesk Construction Cloud. So we have you know, the foundations of that in the Forge, which is that programming language. We have all that shared data between all of these tools, and it spans everything from design to planning to building to operating the building, you know, the facilities management side of things. So when we look at some of the kind of new offerings and the ones that have been kind of integrated, so we look at BIM Collaborate Pro, which is basically just taking the place of BIM 360 design. So that's the new product, and when you purchase BIM Collaborate Pro, you can host projects either in the BIM 360 platform, and some projects are be, can be hosted in the Unify platform. Then they've also introduced onto the planning stage a new tool, which is Autodesk Takeoff, available only in the Unify platform. And then the old systems that they already had, they purchased a few years ago, which of course is Assemble and Building Connected. Then we have Autodesk Build, which is a combination of the BIM 360 build and the Plan Grid product. And that's what that new build, that new offering is. And then again, under the build side of things, they still have Pipe, which is one of the more um, recent purchases that they had. And then under operation, there's BIM 360 Ops, which is kind of the older tool now because they've just released um, Autodesk Tandem, which is their new facilities kind of management or operation tool, work order management, and things like that. And then underneath that, you have the kind of lower things. You have either BIM Collaborate, which is basically the, essentially the replacement for the model coordination module tool that you could purchase separately. And of course, Autodesk Docs, which when you purchase Autodesk Docs, you can host your projects either in the Unify platform or in the BIM 360 platform now, because again, that's a separately purchasable, purchasable um, product now. So when we kind of look at all the, the tools there, the real foundation is the docs, the Autodesk docs um, is the foundation here. That's the document management platform for all of the solutions. Again, if you purchase just Autodesk docs, you get with Autodesk docs either the ability to create projects, like I said, in the new Unify platform, or you can create projects in the existing BIM 360 platform or the original platform. And again, it's available as a standalone product. Um, also, when you get docs, it's also available as an entitlement when you have, um, when you purchase the AC collection, I should say, you get with it access to docs or BIM 360 docs. So if you have people who are not gonna participate in the other solutions, but they do have a collection license, then that's great. They already have access to docs then. But you can, if you, someone doesn't have an AC, you know, AC collection license, then you can just purchase Box by itself, of course. When you purchase the higher level tools, everything from Collaborate, Collaborate Pro, Takeoff, Build, those all include access to Docs. It's not a separate tool that you have to buy. Now, if you do host things in the Unify platform, it's just a US server at the moment, which in this case, I'm sure for everyone here, that's not as important. And just to be clear, at the moment, if you do host something in the unified platform for docs there is no mobile app at the moment there is a mobile app if you host things in your bim 360 projects then there absolutely is an, a very robust mobile app for working in the field with anything that you have within docs you just can't do that um, in the autodesk docs environment but you can do that in a bim 360 docs environment so honestly, that's the only real difference between the two right now. The key difference is basically that, it's just that there's no mobile app for the Autodesk Docs at this time. So again, with the BIM 
360 or just the docs environment, it's about document control, document versioning, everyone has the latest version, and document approvals as well. There's a review process you can build into the system and it's all included there. But that key part, of course, is the document control. You can control how people access things based on um, a role that someone has, based on, some, on a um, username, or based on the company that someone works for. So there's a lot of granularity in the way that you can control the documents and everyone based on their job functions is gonna have a very tailored experience when they come into the system here. And it's also about versioning. So anytime you're in the system, you always know what the current version is. You know, when you're printing something, the second it's printed, it's already outdated because who knows how many versions are gonna come after that, right? Even the, you finish hitting the print button, version two may be already out. Right, so with this electronic version of it, everything's constant. We know that everyone is looking at the most up-to-date piece of information, but we have access to all previous versions if we need it. And as I mentioned before, there's a document approval workflow, so we can take a document or groups of documents and put them through a process where they have to go through different individuals to review it, and then the reviewed documents can be either be approved in place and is listed as approved, or even copied into a folder that's full of approved documents, and that has, people have limited access to the live documents, but they have full access to the finished or the approved documents folder. So if I jump into docs here, I'm in docs right now, in this case, in the Unify platform, and obviously I can come up here and I can very easily search for any program, any other project. And notice here that there's a letter B next to some of these projects. That means that those projects, so if I typed in Food Mart here, this project here is in the BIM 360 platform and I can simply click on that. And now I'm in BIM 360. And I'm in the BIM 360 docs because that's where this project is. But then I can go back up and do a search here select my project here and now I'm in the Unify platform because this project was hosted in the Unify platform. So it's kind of still that one interface and it allows you to easily get between the different M projects regardless as to which um, platform they're created on. It makes things very easy. Let's get rid of this little friendly message there. So again, all right, here I have a project files folder. So unlike um, the old BIM 360 docs, we just have project files here, that's it. There's no sheets anymore, there's no plans um, in docs and in the Collaborate, Collaborate Pro. So again, I can create folders, nothing unusual there. I can place documents up in this environment just like before in the BIM 360 and share them. Every document in here is version controlled. See, that's version four of this document, version one of that document. I have access to all previous versions of the document. You can download them or make them current. Or if I'm viewing a document right here and I'm in the fourth version of that document, I can come up here and say, oh, I'd like to see the first version of the document. And now I'm in the first version of the document. And you can see I've also been warned this is not the current version, but I am in an older version here. And now I can jump forward into the latest version. And note that this is a Word file, yet I can view it. I can view Word, PowerPoint, Excel. I don't need the authoring application anymore. That was always the issue. When you put files in these document management tools, the only way to view them is to download them in many cases. Well, the key with the Autodesk um, or Autodesk Docs here is that there's 50 different formats it can directly view from PDFs to Docs. I could open up a Navisworks file. I have a schedule documents here. I can go into the Excel file and view it. I have the different tabs within the Excel document, of course, right here. So I have access to all of that. So it's a full functional multi-model viewer, if you will, for lack of a better terms. I can come up here and look at my design models and I could pull out you know, PDF plans or I could pull out AutoCAD plans if that's what I want, AutoCAD files, and I can view an AutoCAD file here. Here's the AutoCAD file, and I have full access to that. I could change the screen here, I can get properties of objects. I can pick that um, um, display unit there, and I have information on it, or you know, just that layer, that grid line. If I select that, I have information for that, or I can show all layers, or show all objects, or pick an object and hide it or isolate it. So I have those kind of basic functions. I can come in here and change kind of my viewing properties and change the appearance to black and white, 
or black background again for Revit, you know, for AutoCAD files, which makes sense, and back to white for all the other kind of universal formats such as PDF and um, Revit and so on. Again, I could get down and open up, you know, MicroStation files. I can open up um, Navisworks files. All of those can be viewed in this environment here. I can look at my architectural model and have access to the architectural model. And of course, I can see that. I can see all the sheets in the model, any of the sheets that I've chosen, kind of published with the team. So all that becomes available to me here. As you can see, I have markup capabilities all within this environment. I have issue tracking capabilities. Again, all with just docs. So I can select this issue. This door needs to move. And there's some information about it. It's assigned to all the architects that are in the team or I could assign it to a certain individual, or I could assign it to an entire company or a different job function. So I have all those abilities. I can assign this to the architect. So maybe imagine it's the architects there and so on. I could add references to this. I could add some other files that I want to this specific issue um, that I maybe I took some photos in the files here. I can come in here to files, get down the project files, get down to my general documents in the docs environment. I can just store photos up here. So maybe there's a photo that I want to assign to this right here and all of these other things. So all this information you know, is available to me. So I can assign that to it right there. So that photo becomes essentially assigned to this particular issue in this case. And this is all within just the docs environment. I can take any document here and I can put it through an approval process where I could take this file here and I can see, you know, what its status here is. This one has been approved, but I could then go into maybe my PDF plans over here or my other documents or any of the other files that I want. I need to put one of these through an approval process so I can take this document right here and here and I can right click on those and now submit for review. And then I can pick a review process here issued for construction and I can give this a name. And I'll call it construction review. And I submit that and I push that through my review process. Sam Smith is the first reviewer. He gets sent and get notified of that. I can look under my reviews on the left side here. Let me just go over to um, docs. And then I have the reviews area. Here is a review that is in play right now. So this is the latest one. I can now start the review. So Sam Smith is the next reviewer. So he's the one going through here, making comments on the drawing, adding comments. He submits the review here, looks good, and so on. Then it moves on to the next person. So I notify the next person that they need to review this. And then John Jones takes it, does the same thing, reviews the documents, adds comments, marks things up, submits the review to the next person. That person gets notified that they have to make the final review here. So now they're going to start the review where they're doing the final review. They read all the comments from everyone and they're just going to mark all these documents here as approved or maybe this one's approved with comments and submit the review and now it's done. So now these documents have gone through a custom workflow. You can set up as many steps as you want and whomever participates in that. And in some cases, based on what, the, what this review does, it may actually take these documents and copy them into another folder, which is the approved for construction folder in this case. So it's com completing the review right now. If I went back to the actual location of these files and I look at the review status you know, of those particular files here, so under PDF plans there, I can come over and I can see right here that this has been approved, approved, and this one has been approved, but with comments. So again, very powerful tool for controlling you know, that the documents have been reviewed properly, they've gone through the proper channels and all of those things. So again, really powerful tool there. And it's all just part of docs. And again, we have strict permission controls. I can take a look at a folder here, go to permissions for that folder, and I have very finite control over who can access this. So I have project administrators in here of full access, and then I can add access to project managers. So anyone who's listed as a project manager, I can pick that role out of the list and then give that project manager view, download, and publish markup options and add them in as that kind of control there. So you see it's now role-based or I could add a company and anyone that belongs to a company has certain levels of access. 
So again, managing all of this and controlling what people's experience are in here is again, very easy. Oops, so let's move on to the right presentation. There we go. So now we talk, take a look at the tools, that, uh, um, the Collaborate tools, I should say, right? So we have BIM Collaborate and BIM Collaborate Pro. So essentially, BIM Collaborate has taken the place of the model coordination that used to be able to purchase separately. So BIM Collaborate includes model coordination. Of course, it includes docs. But what it also includes is the visibility into the package release tool that the BIM Collaborate Pro uses. So a project manager who doesn't need Collaborate Pro because he's not editing a Revit model management, the model viewer, aggregated model views, the project timeline, um, the visual change management, automatic clash detection, issue management, including Revit and Navisworks and things like that and reports. So all of that is built into Collaborate. So again, it's great for the BIM managers and BIM coordinators who may not be directly editing the models, you know, kind of in the cloud there, but managing the process, managing the project. Whereas if we go to BIM Collaborate Pro, the only thing that that really adds is the work sharing ability. So that's the only real addition. When you get into Pro, it means that you can cloud work share with Revit, Civil 3D, or Plant 3D, and you can also um, be location independent work sharing, right, with authoring tools. So anywhere where your laptop and Revit is, you can get to your model as long as you have Wi-Fi. It can be at home, it can be in the office, the job site trailer, Starbucks, whatever, and I'm able to go ahead and access my model and work on it like I was sitting in the office on a local server. That's the key here. That's what the whole point of the Collaborate Pro is, is to be able to not only share everything with everyone, to be able to work from anywhere. So again, I can collaborate anytime, anywhere, and again, I'm saving lots of time because I don't have model update day anymore per se, where everyone has to take their files and manually upload them into the cloud and, do, and distribute them that way, right? I have a much more automated way of performing those same types of functions. And that's the key here that both the Collaborate and Collaborate Pro users will have access to this page, which is the managed collaboration or just the actual design collaboration page within the web-based interface. Previously, those who had model coordination did not have access to this, they do now. So that's why when I look at um, BIM Collaborate, that is a project manager tool where BIM Collaborate Pro is the user or the editor of the Revit model tool. And that's really the key difference between the two. So when we look at the interface here, everyone, project managers, collaborate, users, Collaborate Pro users can all get access, of course, to the document level here. Then what I've done is I've created a design models folder and I have my architectural team, a civil team, an MEP team, a structural team. They're all working within their own folders and only have access to their folder. The civil engineer can't see the architectural folder or the MEP team engineer can't see the structural or the architectural folders within this environment because those are working areas reserved for those, but they can see the design collaboration page. So now I have all my teams listed here. So I have my MEP team, structural team, and architectural team. Civil is not here because this tool is only for Revit in this case. I have the different releases that the various teams have made to the other teams. So I see the architect had a 50% review, a 75% review, and a 50% review. So in essence, the architect has only shared their model three times with the team. So there's only three versions available of the model to the structural and MEP team. They don't work on live models. You work on a controlled release cycle, just like you kind of do now with an FTP or Dropbox site, but all within this environment. You're still working and storing your models in the cloud, but as each design team gets to a certain milestone event, they will release their drawing like this 50% drawing or this 100% drawing right here. And then the other teams can see that. I can look at the MEP team, and I can see that the MEP team has seen and consumed, accepted, you know, these models here, but the MEP team has only consumed the 50 and the 75%. They have yet to consume the structural 100% completion set. And before they do that, the MEP team wants to know, okay, I'm going to start working on my 100%. So I want to know well, what changed in the structural model. Let's take a look, show changes. So between the 75% and the 100% release of the design, what changed? Well, I can see right here that the only thing that really changed here was just this bay over here. Good. Okay. Well, what was, let's see, what was added? 
these bar joists here were added. Okay, well, what was removed? Ah, these ones were removed because they're in a different direction. And what was modified? Well, that's the structural beam here because originally it was a bar joist and it got converted basically into a structural, just a standard W flange because it needed to be that to hold the extra weight. Okay, so now I understand the changes. And because this rotated 90 degrees as an MEP engineer, I was running a lot of my duct work through very specific areas in the open web joist, but now they're the other direction. So now I need to plan and I may have to move some of my ducts underneath the open web bar joist, right? So that can cause some other additional challenges. And no one told me this. I was able to determine this on my own. And that's the key here. So that's a really powerful ability here is to be able to compare the different releases of the team, see when they release them, and then choose when my background updates. I don't want my background to update yet, or if I do, I select that, hit the consume button, and because I'm already linked to that consume folder inside of my working folder, every time I consume an, a new release from one of these design packages, my background gets updated, but only when I want it to update. So everyone has control. The designers release their models only when they're ready to be used by the other teams, and the other teams only use the background model when they're ready to use it, ready to consume it. And that's what this tool basically manages here is all of that. Also in the Unify platform, we also have access to meeting minutes now too. So that's a new thing here is that for instance, I have a, a site work preparations meeting and I had two meetings that were agenda. One right here should have actually been a meeting minute. So I'll close that one. That's meeting minutes. These are official minutes and items that were not dealt with here that were ongoing or open or moved on to the follow-up number two meeting right here. So the number two meeting is here. These are the things that were still ongoing and they've been followed up you know, from that original meeting there. So again, this tracks that, this attracts all the invitees and people who attended the meeting. So I knew who was there. This is the agenda document that becomes my agenda meeting and then the meetings minute form. I can create a report. I can have my items that we're talking about and open or close them or take an item right here. Confirm the delivery schedule for the concrete. Well, who's responsible for doing that? Well, I'll come in here and say Sam Smith is because he's our structural engineer. So he's now responsible. I've assigned that person, that person here, Sam Smith has been assigned to that particular um, meeting minute item. So that's fully tracked now. So these are all the things that just collaborate brings to the table. Collaborate Pro just adds the benefit of you can open Revit and work on your models in the cloud. That's the difference there and the only difference. The other thing that Collaborate you know, Pro gives us also access to, which of course is the um, clash detection um, as well here. So I come in there, I can go to model coordination and get access to the clash coordination information. So I can come in here and see all my clashes. I can go over to my clash matrix here and see all the different clashes between all the different trades. Or I can go into my views where I've already combined models together, like such as um, duct versus structure here. I can see all of the clashes that between those particular models. I've created my clashing views here. I can look at all the clashes. Let's group them by duct work, see what clashes with the duct work. And then I can go in here and find all my clashes. And once I found that clash, I can create basically an issue from that and assign that clash to someone. If I look over here, these are clashes that have already been assigned to different individuals. So this is issue number 38. It even has the ID numbers from the objects that are clashing. It gives you information about that. I've assigned it to John Jones. It's in the main building plenum space. It was due on June 29th, so it hasn't been resolved yet. It takes a screenshot of it, so anyone who has access to issues would have access to this tool. Even if they just had docs, they can at least open the issue and see a screenshot of the clash, but just not the live clash here. So now I have that ability to find the clashes, assign them issues, assign them individuals to become resolved, and that's kind of all automatic in here. So that's another tool that the Collaborate gives you access to. forward here there we go so that's really what bim collaborate and bim collaborate pro gives you so collaborate gives you everything and then collaborate pro adds in the work sharing for both revit civil 3d and plant that's really the only difference in pro is that it's just that work sharing capability and they all come with the document management which is document control document versioning document approvals and so on so then the next product is Autodesk Build, which of course was 
built also in the Unify platform. So there's still two products out there. There is BIM 360 build, which is a completely different product than Autodesk build. So just remember, they are two separate products. They have a lot of overlap, but there are more abilities and things being built into Autodesk build. And that is, of course, the future moving product. That's the one that's going, moving forward here. So with Autodesk build, of course, we get document management. It comes with cost management, which is for managing budget creation and change orders and payment application and cost forecasting. It is not an accounting tool but it is an absolute tool for the this side of things, the management of the costs on the project. Um, again, primarily the change order tracking and is making sure we're staying on budget there. Then of course, is the project management, which is RFI submittals, meeting minutes, daily reports, there's quality control, which is your punch lists, things like that, issue management. And then safety, which really comes into issues too, safety issues, safety planning, tracking, observations, inspections. And then project closeout is really the asset tracking that's inside of, um, Autodesk build for just managing all your commissioning and information that you need to hand over all the information about the HVAC equipment to the owner at the end of a project, right? Those are the types of things you do a project closeout and all the documentation. So again, it, this is configurable project management within build. So we, again, we have, you know, those RFI submittals, meeting minutes, daily reports. So we have the RFI management tool here where you control the different roles that people play within the review process. You have the submittal process where you manage as a general contractor. And again, this submittal tool is from the viewpoint of a general contractor. It doesn't really fit anyone else. This is not something I would recommend to an architect or someone who simply participates in the submittal workflow. This is a very powerful submittal workflow, but it's meant to be managed from by a GC. So that's who this fits. Meeting minutes, of course, we've already covered the same thing there. And then we have the ability to do just daily reports. And again, everything in build now. So Autodesk build has the mobile equivalent, the mobile app for that. So that can be done on your phone, that can be done on your tablet devices and so on. So everything in the build environment is fully mobile. It's just the Collaborate, Collaborate Pro and Docs. It's not mobile at the moment. So if you have obviously um, build, then you're working in the field, because that's really where you do most of the work. Most of build is really being used in the field, although significant portions of course are still on the PC side. But this is where you're out in the field doing your daily report, work log, who was on site, the name of the people, equipment, the weather today, because all of those things are important factors. Then we have you know proactive quality management here. So again, this really comes into the checklist, the forms, things like that. So you can build your own um, checklist, your own templates that you then use on future and current projects. And you have qual you know, quality control punch lists. We have quality assurance and making sure that there's lots of issues, we can track those and so on there. We have, of course, issue management, which is universal across the system, but you're walking around, you see a problem, create an issue on the document, take some supporting photos if you're on site, and then assign that issue to someone to be resolved. And so you have a very powerful issue management tool for seeing the clashes, anything that you create an issue about, you have access to that in the field and create them in the field on the fly, on the document, self-contained issues that are not related to a plan, but just some other issue and so on. And of course, that's really punch lists feed into the quality control as well. You go into your rooms, make sure the rooms are punched out at the end of the project, you know, make sure the rooms are ready for delivery to the client, your, your handover checklist, whatever that may be. So when we jump back into the product here, we can go, again, we're all in one project from design. And then if it's a your design build organization, you have it all in one place, one project. Now I'm gonna move over to build. And now I'm in build and I have my project timeline here indicating the different milestones the project needs to be um, meet at certain times there. Then over here, I have some quick links to sheets and things like that. So this is just kind of my project homepage. Then I have my sheets. So here are all the sheets for the project. These are the construction documents now. So sheets aren't files, that's separate. Sheets are the actual construction documents. So this is the actual document that I'm in the field referencing and building the building from. And again, I can see older versions. Oh, I wanna see revision one, um, that's part of revision one, this version of the document, the third or the first document. So now I'm in revision one, the revision one package that was released. I'm in the initial release of the project right here. 
This is the first set of drawings that was released. And again, I can go back to the current drawing. And I'm curious what changed. So I can come over here, do my slip sheeting here and look at the different versions. So I have my primary construction, which is the latest set. And I could compare that to the initial release of the document and hit compare. So even though this is essentially what I like to call an unintelligent PDF file, I'm able to easily see all the changes. So now I can come in here and see the areas that basically changed in this model. So I see red is the current and blue is the old. And this is good. I see where the changes are, but it's kind of hard to visualize that. I'll just go ahead and go into my side-by-side -side mode. And now I can see this is release one. And how did release three change? Oh, they changed the door direction there. Oh, they added an electrical closet. Oh, they threw some conduits in right there. Um, what else changed? Oh, there's a new refrigeration unit put in here in, built in and they removed the shelving units. Oh, and they fixed the door here to be more ADA compliant because that was an issue we had earlier. So now whenever there are new releases of documents, I'm not sitting there scratching my head trying to figure out, well, what changed? All I have to do is open up any view and see any of those changes, whether they be the sections, the elevations, the details, anything. Some things just moved, some maybe there's a little change to a detail that I didn't notice, but now I see it because I'm able to run that slider across and see the color coding. I see the mechanical sheets are in here, the structural sheets are in here. So I have full access basically to all the construction documents and they're all version control and I all know that they're up to date. I actually had a company that um, we work for and they helped us do a presentation a few months ago and it's a construction firm. And basically, if anyone walks on the site with paper, they are escorted off the site because the only thing allowed on the site are the tablets with the current documents. So they have to participate in that process or they can't work on the site. And that's an actual real project. That's really what they did. So again, this has replaced in some places, some projects, the paper documents. This becomes the official source of truth, whether it be the old, in that case, it was the old, old, older current BIM 360 build, but it's no different here. And again, we still have access to the files though. And then if there were certain files I could put here, these are just general ones, so these aren't working drawings. So I have files for the field. So everyone that has access to docs, if they're included in this project, they would have access to these folders. But the purpose is that these folders are things that are shared out in the field. So people out in the field would have access to you know, these spec documents and right here. So these are ones that are shared with the team at large and they have access to this in the field through their app. That's why that's here. We have the forms, which I mentioned before, which again is all that checklist and everything here. So here's a checklist that I have in play here for precast concrete. And again, you have to go through here and answer the questions you're in the field. You can answer them here too if, it's, if you're the one that this is assigned to. And then you'd answer the questions either here in the field and at the end you would even have to sign off on it right here and sign and literally sign the ipad with the stylus to approve that particular checklist is completed and ready to move on so right now this is still in play and it's assigned to me here to give a description the date of the form i could add references maybe additional photos to this checklist as i'm doing it um, i could assign it to an asset i could assign other checklists that are connected to this checklist that I also have to play. And again, I can assign issues to any of these things. So if I answer this as negative, I can come over here and add a photo. I could add a note or I can add an issue to checklist item 1.19. So now adding an issue you know, to that, that checklist item you know, in that right there. Oops, screen went blank there for a minute. There we go. So again, whenever I'm in those forms, I can assign issues when there's a negative response, I create an issue to make sure that that negative response is dealt with. Or I might have a daily report, so here's my, here's my weather that day. Um, the HVAC crew was on site and they had five people worked all day. They added um, air handling unit number one is what they actually installed. I might have some materials or equipment. I've signed off on the daily report, some notes, some photos, all of those things. Or added here and then of course I can create printed PDF reports of these um, when I'm completed with them so again I might have my own forms like I have a timesheet right here I have my own PDF form that I'd like to keep in the system I just want people to fill it out virtually so again this is just a standard PDF that I just use the smart so I have a full version of Acrobat 
or a tool that can put smart fields in. And now I can type in, you know, the codes here to this and description of work. And I put in, you know, eight hours that day and eight hours here and eight hours there and seven hours of overtime because I'm crazy and seven and five hours of overtime and so on. And of course, this is, you know, counting this stuff up because, again, I made these smart fields in um, not here, but actually in the Acrobat program and then brought them in here so that I can use them. So again, really powerful tool here to be able to use any form you want, but just kind of virtualize it and or you can use its own inbuilt tools to build some of those things like I showed you, which were the um, those those punch lists or those checklists would have this preconditioned questions in them that you can type in. So you can use predetermined forms of your choosing that are just PDF that you bring in or you can, of course, just create simple checklists within the system itself natively. So again, really powerful tool here. And again, I have the different ones. I have quality reports. I have safety checklists. I've had safety inspection list that's in mo basically in play. And again, this is also a safety inspection list. But in this case, as you can see, it's a PDF form that I brought in. Now, it's smart enough to fill out some of the things for you, like it'll put the date in. It will put in the project name. So you can build in some of those variables into these forms. Again, pretty powerful. Has a, although I didn't mention it really in any, any of my slides, a very robust photo management tool. So every photo you take, no matter what it's attached to, is automatically listed here from clashes to issues to RFIs. All of those things, I can sort them by photos of different types, meaning photos, videos, or 360 photos, um, photos that are referenced from issues. So all these photos here, are photos that came from the various issues I had in the project. Or I can come in here and say, only show me ones that are from RFIs or from submittals or so on. If I want, I can go to the map and any photos that are spatially aware. I took this photo back in 2017 at a conference, a BIM conference in um, Chicago on Goose Island right there. And that's exactly where I was standing when I took the photo. Because I used my phone and my phone knew where it was. So photos will be geo-referenced if the device taking the photo knows where it is, which is nice. Again, I have the RFIs here where I'm going in and processing the RFIs where I go in and I set my RFI workflow, a single cre a creator and one manager and one reviewer or two reviewers. And then I designate under advanced settings, you know, if I want, if I can open the RFIs and close them, I can go to permissions to control um, who can be the take on the different workflows here. So who's a creator? Everyone can create an RFI. Who's a reviewer? John Jones is a reviewer and Sam Smith is an available reviewer and Scott Burke here is the manager of the RFI process as a whole. And that kind of works the same in the submittals here where we have a very distinct process here. We have all the submittals that are either in a required state or already closed and answered. We have the submittal packages. If we want to group things together, we have all the spec sections that we'd be using in the project. We would just come in here and designate the permissions, meaning who is the one that manages the submit the submittal process. It might be one person. It could be several people. That's really up to you. You have different response types. Approved would be approved. Approved is noted for record only. There'd be a revise and resubmit. There'd be a rejected type of comment, and you can have different responses under these three categories of you know, this is what a, a, a um, submittal can be. It can either be approved, revised and resubmit, or rejected, but you can modify what the term is. Instead of revise and resubmit, it could be resubmit and revise, or whatever terminology you, you so chose to use. So it gives you a lot of flexibility there. But again, the best way to really understand this, if I go under the submittal tool right here, you can just see the overview and how it kind of works here, right? So on the top of a submittal, you'll see what stage you're in. It gets highlighted. So this is a submitted stage. This stage right now, the submittal is in prepared for review, then it's in review, and then it's closed and distributed. And here's the workflow. So a responsible contractor or a manager can create an item, assign it to the contractor. The contractor can create, add their attachments, submit it to the manager, it goes through the review process, creates the official response, and either creates a revision and then it becomes a re revision two of the submittal, or it gets closed, approved, and distributed, and then everyone in the project would then have access to the closed and distributed submittals here. Like this one is looking for information on acoustical ceiling tile. Here are the cut sheets. Here is the activity on the submittal and all the people that went through, and this has become the official response. 
Whereas if I go back and look at another submittal that's waiting for a submission, it's in the submit stage and it's waiting for someone to actually submit it for review. So that's the stage that this submittal is in. And then kind of one of the last parts here is the assets. So this of course allows you to manage all the things in a project that you want to manage. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. This is more about kind of the handover side of things. So I'll talk about that a little bit here later. But I just wanted to go through those other things. So again, that's that same with that safety management here too, right? That was all those checklists and everything. You have safety checklists that you go through, inspections, punch lists. And if you create a negative response and you assign it as a safety observation, but a, a negative an issue, then that gets into the, um, the AI or the um, reporting tools, the analysis tools. And again, that simplified project closeout is that commissioning module I was showing you there. So this is where you go ahead and create all the things that you basically want to um, work with to track in an installation process of, like a, a um, VAV box or an air handle unit it has to be ordered, installed, delivered, pre-startup, startup, pre-functional pre performance tests, functional performance tests. It's accepted by the owner post-acceptance. Everything's been delivered by the owner. So you create your own kind of status sets as well for these things, and it becomes that central way to turn over documentation over to a client. So again, back in it here, tab over to that. So again, I have all my assets. Show me my electrical assets here. Um, so these, in this case, is lighting fixtures. So under electrical, I have emergency equipment, light fixtures, motor control centers, I just don't have anything in any of these yet, but I do have light fixtures. So those are the two light fixtures that I'm tracking. I have HVAC equipment, air handling units. There's the three air, air handling units, um, heat pumps, um, regular pumps, base mounted pumps, VAV boxes. What status are they in? Well, this one's specified and there's three references assigned to it. Well, what are the references? Oh, well, there's a spec document, there's an instruction document, there's a plan detail document, and then there's a, a inspection form. So I have to go in here and use a daily safety inspection on that, or I can add a checklist, an installation checklist. All of that can be attached to the VAV box. I can assign a barcode to it so that I could be in the field, scan the barcode on the device, and it would bring me to the asset on my tablet. So it's very easy to get to the objects by using barcoding there. So again, each object can control activity, references. I could be warranty data, installation information, a maintenance information could be all attached to that VAV box. And of course, the details, what's the status of this? You know, what's the description of this is, oh, we're now moving this into, it's been specified, this one's actually been ordered. So now we've just changed the status of that to order. So again, this is what this is for, is just managing all the things in the site, and then this eventually becomes a way to hand over the data to the client. So we'll jump over to the presentation again here. And move on. So also included with build is the cost management module. So again, this is budget creation, contract administration, change orders, payment applications related to the change orders, cost forecasting. So again, this is not meant to replace your accounting system across multiple projects. This is just the management of this specific project to make sure that we're staying on budget. So you create all the codes. As a, in fact, cost is almost bigger than all of build put together. There's a lot of work and a lot of things that go into this. But again, it's for managing the cost items, the potential change orders, requests for quotes, um, owner change orders, supplier change orders, all those things. And you can define the fields, any of those things to customize your recent needs, payment application, e-signatures, all that stuff can go through this whole system using your own specified forms that you'd upload into the system. And again, cost forecasting, making sure where you know the cost is known, budget changes are understood and accounted for, and so on there. So I'm not an expert on cost. I would need someone else to be at a two-hour presentation just on cost by itself there. But again, when you have access to build, you actually have access to the cost module. And this is just where you would enter in the usage data here. And let's dismiss that. So we have dismiss that, there's just new features. So we have all that data that you would enter in here, your main contract information, your budget payment applications, um, managing the change order, the change orders here, request for quotation there, 
a request for a change order and so on will all be managed through the system. And you still have access to files and then also specific reports that are related to um, cost reports, which you would have, of course, access to. And then there's you know settings here that, again, are for the administration side of things and so on. You can lock the budget. So there's a lot of control and power here um, that can be managed by the individuals um, controlling this for your project. So you can even take an RFI and turn the RFI into a potential change order. So you can pr promote items within the system into the cost um, analysis engine here as well. So again, like I said, there's a lot of settings and things. You set up your units of measure, your income settings, your expenditure settings, change order preferences, permissions of who can do what within the system, and of course, a full activity log of anything that anyone has done in the system. Um, you would see all of this right here. So again, really powerful tool there. And then the last part of the build side of things is really um, the insights here, the dashboards that we can have, the reporting that we can do that can be scheduled, um, the data connector where we can take raw data from all our projects and using other tools like Power BI or even Excel, I can pull this information in and do my own analysis beyond the kind of built-in reporting that's already in the system. And it uses the construction IQ for risk assessment on our projects to make sure there's no excessive risk in any areas of our projects. So that's also a very important part of this, using machine learning and AI to understand that risk on your projects. So when I'm in my project here and I go over to, in this case, Insight, I can see the potential risk on this project, any areas of design risk, I have safety risk. So again, safety risk factors, not much on this project. If I go back up this overall risk, I see I do have four code compliance issues. I have 14 documentation incomplete issues, 13 issues that are overdue, a review that's overdue. Um, I have no quality risk right now, so we're green, we're good there, and so on. So across these subcontractors, none of these subcontractors have any high risk. But I could look in here and see that, hey, I have one subcontractor that's having, having all types of issues, and that would be high risk for that subcontractor. Maybe I don't use them on a future job, or maybe I dive in to why, why they're having issues. And maybe the issues aren't their fault. There are other things that are causing them delays. But again, this will help me determine that. That's the whole point of all of this. So I have all these design cards here. They're all pre-baked, and you can turn the ones on or off you don't want, of course. Um, you just can't edit these, although you can edit their locations and positions on the screen. I have you know, my different categories of safety risk, quality risk, design risk. So do I have any design risk on this project? Again, I have design issues by company, design issue trends, design issue status, open versus closed, and so on there. So again, a lot of good analysis here to make sure your projects are staying healthy. I have an executive overview dashboard where I can see risk across all projects across the country. So wherever my projects are, I can see and get kind of a heat map here of all the risk you know, on any of these projects. And they're scattered across the country here. And I see I have this project here has medium risk, the rest of these are low risk, and the rest of these projects are too new to have any risk on them at the moment. And I have 261 active projects. And now I can see cost reports across all projects. So I have some projects in here that already have been established. And I can see original and projected budgets, how much things have changed, expenditure variances. I have design risk across all my projects here and which projects are having the most types of design risk and issues and so on. Quality issues for my construction projects, safety issues for my construction projects, all that information is available to me here. So it has quite the powerful um, insight mechanism. And I can also go back in, let me jump back in there, one more thing here, and I can create my reports. So if I go back here to this general insight for my project, so I'll get out of this and just wanna go back to my project there, and I look down at my reports, I can have reports that are coming out, and the key here with these reports is that they can be scheduled. So this is a schedule report. This report's running every week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. And this is my issue detail report that's running every day for all the issue details. And I can come in here and I can edit the report. I can download a copy of this report. I can go over here to the templates for that report. And now I can edit the actual schedule for that and say, hey, I actually want that running on Tuesday and Thursday too, every day or just you know three times a week. And 
once weekly here, but on these days of the week and this time. And who am I sending this to? I'm sending it to the MEP installers and myself, or I could be sending it to those outside the project who don't have a license. And the last of the new tools here is Autodesk Takeoff. So again, this is very much replacement for tools like on-screen takeoff, and there's a takeoff tool in Navisworks. This is a much more robust takeoff tool where we can combine both takeoffs in 2D and 3D. We can control the users who have access to that, document management within that, document versions within that, and then the content management and creating our different takeoff packages, such as our concrete, our finishes packages, our external shell packages, all of that. 2D takeoff of PDF plans or 3D takeoff off of models. So all of that also done in the same interface. I just come over here to takeoff, same project, same files area. I brought the files in, I've created my different packages right here, which would be my different takeoff packages. I could go in and look at my different um, sheets and models that I have in this environment. And I could go into the 3D model and I could go into this one here. I could then select a takeoff package that I want to see, maybe the exterior architectural walls here. I could then go into my actual takeoffs right here. Here's one of them that I've already created. I could go into this model here and you can see the ones here, they're color coded because they've already been dealt with. Or my favorite tool here is this is group everything in the clusters. And there's all my groupings. So now I have all my walls I can do takeoffs on. I have all my specialty equipment I can do takeoffs on, casework, curtain wall millions, anything that I want to create a takeoff on, it just organized them into different groups here, generic models, lighting fixtures, here's all the light fixtures. And now I can create a different takeoff type here and basically assign that. I can expand that one just to look inside. These are all the walls and our exterior walls. Here are my takeoff packages and quantities down in the bottom right here. So I'm giving the total linear feet of all the exterior walls right here, and here they all are, and the different types within that. And then I can export this out as an Excel document that I then bring into my costing programs, such as um, you know Sage or something like that. So this is not doing the cost itself, this is doing the quantification and making sure you're getting everything in the model, both in 2 and in 3D, and pulling that information out. But again, the key here is that I'm in one place. I did everything from my pre-design, my design, my quantity takeoff, my clash detection, my construction management, all in one singular, completely interconnected project. And that's really what all this is about, is having everything unified into one cohesive environment here. So with that, I can open up the floor to any questions.